Mr. Logan, follow me. About goddamn time. My apologies. We're very busy. Nice room. You do much waterboarding in here? My name is Porter. I'll be reviewing your case. My case? I lost my passport, period. I got a pretrial hearing in Manhattan day after next, so I need a replacement pronto. This is Robert Patrick Logan, born September 15th, 1964. So, you're a defense attorney, a senior partner at Tanner, Logan, and Neary. That's correct. I'm in London on business. It's a pretrial deposition, and I got the paperwork right here. At least I, uh, I'm still at the hotel, goddammit. Can we proceed, Mr. Logan? There's quite a backlog. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you. So, Robert Logan from Mountain Lakes, New Jersey. Social Security number 997-09-6613. Married to Karen Logan for 15 years. Two boys, Josh, 11, and Caleb, 8. You are a registered voter. You file your taxes on time. Country club membership, occasional church goer some charitable contributions, a little community engagement and pro bono work. Quite a resume, Mr. Logan, or can I call you Bobby? Your file tells us a lot about you, all of the basic information, of course, but we need to understand Bobby Logan, the person. Is that so? State Department's doing psych evaluations now, huh? This process is very thorough. For example, would you describe yourself as a decent person? Honest, compassionate. Excuse me? It's a simple enough question. <laughs> Listen, Porter, it is Porter, right? It's none of your goddamn business if I beat my wife or piss in my neighbor's pool. And it sure as hell isn't any of the federal governments. Now you've confirmed my ID, so let's cut the touchy-feely crap and hustle up that passport. You're impatient to be on your way, I understand. But it's not that simple. I need to be satisfied before you can be allowed to travel. Allowed? Well, what's that supposed to mean? That means you should think very carefully before answering my questions. <laughs> What do you earn, Porter? What you, uh, let, let me take a guess. Mid-level management gig, government salary, uh, pension plan, health care. Nowhere near six figures. Probably closer to mid-fives, am I right? This is not about money. Sure it is. You know who I am. You know I handle the high-profile cases. You probably see me on TV. I'm an important guy. But right now, I'm here in your house, so you're thinking, maybe you're gonna fuck with me a little bit, right? And why would I do that? Who knows? Maybe you failed the bar. Maybe you don't like the kind of clients I represent, but the fact of the matter is, I don't care. But know this, just in case it's not that precious little file of yours. Harassment suits are a specialty of mine, and I always win big. So unless you want me to start making phone calls, I suggest you run along and fetch me my passport. Chop, chop. As I said, I need to be satisfied. All right, ask away, goddammit. it. 
On the 10th of November, 2014, you argued for the successful acquittal of your client, one Salvatore Gallo, a senior member of a New Jersey crime family. Mr. Gallo had been charged with nine counts of racketeering and four counts of murder in the first degree. Correct. It's a matter of public record. State's evidence relied heavily on the testimony of two informants. At the time, both men were being held in protective custody, courtesy of the Witness Protection Program. Through a series of corrupt law enforcement contacts, you acquired the address of the Witness safe house and passed it on to a member of the Gallo family. Shortly thereafter, the two men were murdered, along with a U.S. Marshal. Because of you. That is a very serious accusation, Porter. And if I were you, I would think... The Marshal was married with three young children. You robbed them of their father. You. Personally. Next words out of your mouth better be a retraction. You may not have pulled the trigger, but their blood is on your hands. Think very carefully, Bobby. This is your only chance to cooperate. This is bullshit. We're done here. When you heard the news, how did it make you feel? Did you feel regret? Remorse? I want the name of your superior. Joseph McVeigh. Okay. McVeigh, what is he? Is he the head of your department? Joseph McVeigh, a 31-year-old community worker from Hawthorne, New Jersey. In the summer of 1989, you beat Joseph half to death in the parking lot of the Rail Yard Bar because, and I quote, he looked like a fag. You were drunk and angry, and for no reason at all, you just wanted to hurt someone. Anyone. You played football in college, right, Bobby? Quarterback? On the night of the attack, you weighed over 100 pounds more than Joe. Big guy like you weighing on a little guy like that. That ain't right. When Joseph woke up in hospital, he told the police that he couldn't remember his attacker, but that was a lie. In fact, he was deeply traumatized by the incident. He started drinking heavily. He lost his job. Then he lost his house. Relationships with his friends and family broke down. He became a heroin addict and ended up on the streets. A promising life ruined by you. Where the hell did you get this? In the fall of 1997, Joseph robbed and stabbed a woman to death in Philadelphia. The victim, Maria Salas, was planning to marry her high school sweetheart. Had that union taken place, she would have had children. Bullshit! There's no way you could know that! It's all in here. You see where this is going, Bobby. This lack of remorse, this disregard for the consequences of your actions, this has been a lifelong pattern for you. My advice to you now, Bobby, is to take responsibility. Own your mistakes. Regret them. I'm not saying another goddamn word, lady. Now, if you want to bring the feds in here and charge me with some trumped-up bullshit, you go right ahead. Otherwise, you'd better lawyer up. That's regrettable. Because there's much to answer for. In February 09, you began an affair with a paralegal, one Rachel Ryan whom you made pregnant. When she begged you for help, you broke off the affair, pressured her to abort the child, had her physically threatened by your mob friend. That's enough. Naturally, you did not tell your wife, but Karen knew. The pain of the betrayal devastated her, but she couldn't confront you because she was frightened by what you'd become. Shut your fucking mouth, Porter, and stay out of my personal business, you understand me? You want me to fess up to your bullshit and cry like a pussy? Oh, and show remorse. Well, not a fucking chance. 
Now go and get me my goddamn passport so I can get the fuck out of here. Do you hear me? What is this? Sit down, Bobby. You know what this is. Look, I'm dreaming, right? This is a dream. It's easier if you just accept it. I, 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 I can't. I won't, goddammit. You don't have a choice. Why here? Why this place? Expectation. Familiarity. It makes the transition easier. You were on your way here when it happened. I remember. The subconscious mind will fight to block the process. It's a perfectly human reaction. What the fuck happened to me? It was physical contact. Nothing more, just the briefest of moments. You'd call it fate, but nothing is predetermined. It's the way everything works. Universal collisions. Who was he? His name was Daniel Collins, a paranoid schizophrenic. He'd been off his meds for over a week. He was determined to kill someone that day. It just happened to be you. I mean, it should be that nut job sitting here, not me. I, I, got, I got kids, for Christ's sake. Your kids are doing just fine. Thriving, in fact, since your demise. Karen has found a good man. Already? Oh, come on, bitch. Your perception of time has no meaning here. You've already been dead for several years now. Karen remarried. She's very happy. Josh is at Cornell University. And Caleb is an honor student at Mountain Lakes High. Your death transformed their lives. And what about me? What happens to me? That's always been the problem, hasn't it, Bobby? What's best for Bobby Logan? Humans have the capacity for so much good. But you've chose a very different path. I can't help who I am, goddammit! None of us can! It's encoded! It, it, it's DNA genetics, whatever the fuck! Not true. You had choices. Even in this place, you had the opportunity to atone for the lives that you have destroyed. That opportunity is now past. Your journey will continue, of course but it will be a very different path than you might have imagined. Someone else will be with you shortly. <laughs>